Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. This is One on One. We are honored, absolutely honored, to be joined by uh, Bobby Rydell, singer, actor, uh, <laughs> entertainer, a very special guy, author of the book, Teen Idol on the Rocks, a tale of second chances, all the way from South Philly. South Philly. Let's tell people, this is no joke. Take a look at this, guys. See this over here? Yeah. It is, why am I it's, making this joke? It's an Italian thing. It, why? Where, who well, used to have this? My grandmother. My grandmother. Uh, uh, okay. Was your grandmother's name Lena by any chance? No, Vincenza. Oh, Vincenza. Vincenza my, from, from Naples. Lena Sapienza was my grandmother. Vincenza Cavallo. Oh, God. Oh, nice. And, and by the way, are you upset that we don't have plastic on these? Of course. My <laughs> grandmother would be very upset. <laughs> now, why did, why did our people have plastic on the furniture? You know, I really don't know. <laughs> I, to to uh, preserve it. <laughs> it made no sense. I mean, really. It was very comfortable, too, in the summer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, by the well, way, Bobby, well, well, really nice to sit on. Your original name? Roberto Luigi Riderelli. If you want to say it in American, it's Robert Louis Riderelli. Beautiful. Italian, Roberto Luigi Riderelli. Mezza Bruzzese, Mezza Marca John. So both. Yeah. My father was a, uh, a Marca John. And my mother's side was from Abruzzi. Com Abruzzi. Provincia di Campo Basso. That's the province. Yeah. Beautiful. Exactly. I'll interpret for people. Um, <laughs> you've had an amazing career. Yeah, I've been very lucky. Um, when did you know that you, and when did others around you know that you had this talent to perform, to sing? I was back a long time, Steve. Uh, when my dad was overseas, I was three years old. And my mom and dad would write back and forth. And my mom would write, the baby's always singing, the baby's always singing. <laughs> God's honest truth. And my father wrote back, I, I still have the letter today in, in, in my house back home in Philly. And my father wrote back, who knows, maybe one day we'll have a star in the family. Is that right? Absolutely. And if I had any talent within me whatsoever, my dad was the first one to see it. He used to take me around to small clubs in Philadelphia when I was seven, eight years old. Mm. Asked the club owner, is it okay if my son gets up and sings and does a couple of uh, imitations? Mm. And, you know, when you're a young kid, you know, it's like a, a child act or an animal act. You know, people yes. applaud. I said, wow, all I have to do is do this and they do that. What a wonderful feeling. So that, that, it's been my life. That's all, that's all I've known since about, you know, seven years old. But who discovered you at okay. first and really realized that professionally you could make some money? Matter of fact, a very dear friend of mine, Frankie Avalon, was in a band called uh, Rocco. The Frankie Avalon. The Frankie Avalon, yes. Avalon. And that Funicello and Frankie Avalon. Yeah, the, all of the I beach, sorry, I all of the beach movies. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Frank and I go back. Frankie and I go back. I call him Cheech in Italian, you know. And, um, not Don Cheech. Not Don Cheech. <laughs> not Don Cheech. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, it's, I don't know. It's too, it's, it's, don't the, I was going to go there. Will you give me a few minutes? Scusi. Uh, yeah, Scusi. Scu give me a few senor, minutes before scu I go there. Hey. Stop. <laughs> Ashbet. I spent already. As you were saying, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as you were saying, yeah, uh, on the armor, let's go. <laughs> so with the so with the exactly, <laughs> Mike, uh, Frankie. Uh, we go back. I was ten years old. Frankie was forty. No, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I was ten. Frankie's a couple of years older than me. So uh, he was in a band called Rocco and the Saints, and he said, Bobby Chippy Broncata, the drummer, got sick. He said, could you come in and fill in? Because I've been playing drums since I was right. five, six years old. So I said, yeah, Frank. You know, so I go down. And the head group, uh, the main group, was a band called Billy Duke and the Dukes. And we were the, like, the second part. We were Rocco and the Saints. But I was only in for the night. And the bass player in Rocco and the Saints was a guy by the name of Frankie Day. His real name, Francesco Cocchi. Wow. And he came up to me and he said, I was like 15 years old. He says, I'd like to manage you. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, talk to my father. My, my dad was with me, and we shook hands. No, no signing of a contract, and uh, we went around to different recording companies and got this and yes. this and this. I said, this is really not for me. I was really happy playing drums. And then we went back to Philadelphia, met a man by the name of Bernie Lowe, who was the president of Cameo, which later became Cameo Parkway, recorded three songs, had nothing, I said, this is really not for me. And then my first hit was a song called Kissin' Time, summer of 1959. Basically, Steve, that's how it all started. So hold on. Let's yeah. fast forward a little bit. Sure. You and Ann Margaret, 1963. A lot happens between 59 and 63. But you and Ann Margaret, Bye Bye Birdie, 19. 
63. Correct. You go Peabody. Yes. That's you. Well, you know, I went out and I screen tested with Anne for George Sidney, who was the director. And basically a screen test. They roll film. They want to see what kind of a personality he Did have. you want to be an actor? Not really. Okay. No, not really. I but just, you were hot at the time. Oh, I was very hot you at the time. You had to be real hot to even them, for, for them to look at you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I was, so I went out and I screen tested. And Anne was with me, and we read some lines from the script. We sang, you know, she did one boy, one special, but one girl, one special girl, yada, yada, yada. And go home. And <clears throat> my manager, Frankie Day, he calls, he says, you landed the part of Hugo Peabody. And that was it. Now, I went to see the Broadway show. And uh, prior, you know, to go out and screen test, and Hugo and Peabody in the Broadway show, the legitimate show, did nothing. He didn't sing, he didn't dance, he didn't, he didn't have a line. And I guess Mr. Sidney, George Sidney, saw some kind of magic between Anne Margaret and myself, and every day I would go to the studio on set, and the script got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger with lines and dancing and singing and so on. And it was, you know, I, I, I've never made that many movies, but if I had to make one movie, I mean, Bye Bye Birdie is a classic, you know, such as Grease. Was she amazing? Anne was great, you know. Matter of fact, uh, I sent her my book and she called me. And I was working a place in uh, Florida called uh, The, uh, the uh, Villages. Really, really super place. And I was in the shower, the phone rang, I pick it up, and it's a voicemail. And she says, that's not your name. Your name is Ridarelli, or you go. And she says, Bobby, I just read your book. I can't believe everything that you went through. And she's, she's a sweetheart. And yeah. as I was leaving, I had to leave out of the Orlando airport, I called her. And I said, thank you ever so much, Anne. I said, I really appreciate it. And I said, you know what? Back in 1963, I was 20, you were 21. Why didn't we get mad? <laughs> Why didn't we get mad? <laughs> Could you do this for us? The darkest times. Well, it, <laughs> it were, there, were, there were many. I guess the darkest time was when I lost my first wife, and that was uh, 2003, and she passed away via breast cancer. And uh, we were married for 36 years, Steve, had two children. And when she died, I mean, there was a void that, uh, I mean, there was, there was nobody in bed, there was nobody to talk to, there was nobody to laugh with, there was nobody to cry with. And I... I became an alcoholic. You I did. mean, yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, a bad, uh, n not a bad drug, but I mean, just bad, bad, bad drinking. I mean, to the point where I would hide bottles in my golf bag, in the trunk of my car. God forbid half of the bottle was going in the refrigerator and I'd have to go, you know, to the state store, the liquor store, buy, you know, another bottle. God forbid. You know, How did you know you have a problem? I'm sorry? How did you know you had a problem? I didn't. Who told you? My new wife. Uh, we're married seven years now, and uh, thank God if it wasn't for her, you know, I, I don't think I'd be sitting talking with you right now. Uh, she, she, she had an intervention, you know, and, uh, and that kind of like uh, put me on the straight and narrow, you know, to the point where, I mean, I was so bad, as it says in the book, you, you know. You had a double transplant. I had a double transplant, a, a, a new liver and a new kidney, yeah. I was about a week to 10 days away from, from dying. That's it? Yeah. That's you? That picture? That's me. How oh, isn't you? this great? I, I love that. that. You know, if I can just interject, right. you know, there's no hair. Okay, this is... You got a beautiful head. That's, that's, a, that's a hair piece. It's a nice it hair. Not. Yes, it's a hair piece. But we're doing a show about six months later, have a meet and greet. And this elderly lady comes up with old 45s and some old 8 by 10s and she said, Bobby, God bless you. I'm so happy you came through your surgery with flying colors. I said, thank you ever so much. She said, may I ask you a question? I said, absolutely. She says, I didn't know they shaved your head for transplant surgery. <laughs> I see I said, how your hair grew back. I, I, <laughs> I said, sweetheart, this is a hair piece. What are you, you going to tell them that for? Why not? Who cares? Hmm? Zit? Yeah, exactly. But, but who cares, really? I, come on, we're vain. We care. Uh, no. You, boy, you put it all out there. <laughs> you, you're better than I am. You ready? Um, 
I won't tell Yeah, anybody. because you've got all of that. <laughs> How about this? You ready? Hello. Some friends that were a little... Mm-hmm. <laughs> you knew them and had to deal with them. Yeah. How? Why they leave... How did they leave you... Okay, they didn't leave you alone because you worked in the clubs and you knew these guys. Yes. How did you manage your interactions with them? Uh, I'm not going to start mentioning names. It's you don't in need the, to. It's in the book, but I, I, was having, I was having dinner with this particular gentleman and two of his... Uh, associates. Associates. And we're sitting at a restaurant in Brooklyn, and he says to me, Bobby, he said, you could have been a big star. He says, Sinatra loves you. I said, I love him too, Louis. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave and, it at that. Go ahead. And he said something to the effect that... There's you and Sinatra right there. Yeah, wow. That was 19 years old. That was at the oh Copa, you Copa be Cabana. Me. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. He was sitting with Sammy Kahn, Jimmy Van Usen, Richard Conti, and Joe DiMaggio. Stop it. Yeah. And Jules Padel, who was the yes. owner of the Copa, the Copa, he was about four foot five, had no neck, talk like this, right? And he hits Frank on the shoulder. He says, Frank, I want you to meet the kid. You're the kid? And Sinatra turned around. He said, how you doing, Robert? Called me Robert. Oh, my God. I said, fine, Mr. Sinatra. How are you? Wonderful. Would you care to join us? I said, it would be my pleasure. And a couple of minutes go by, and he turns to me. He says, uh, what do you drink, Robert? I said, Coke. <laughs> <laughs> I figure if I said scotch of water, I get smacked in the face. You know. That's, that's but amazing. anyway, you know, this particular gentleman said that uh, been big. my father more or less yes. messed up my career. And I looked at him, and I called him a effing liar. Well, his eyes went like this. He got up. He left the table. These two guys say, you don't call him. Uh. Yes. I said, he's talking about my father, my family. He's a liar. And now there's silence. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. Is the Hudson come into mind? You know, swimming with the fishes, concrete Komoda type of thing. But this particular gentleman came back, hugged me, kissed me. Because he said somebody your father, he, he respected because you. Of course, I, 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 yeah. I took up for family. Before I let you go, you're still performing today. Yes, sir. How young are you? I'm 74. I just turned 74 wow. April 26th. How the yeah. hell you look like this? You well, look tremendous. I, new liver, new kidney. No, but you're still performing. <laughs> you're, you're still oh, packing I, them I, in. Uh, How? Why? Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, after the surgery, you know, or prior to the surgery, you know, you're going to have tubes and this and that. Am I going to be able to do what I've done all my life? Because I really, really enjoy what I'm doing. It's not a job. I love what I'm doing. Right. And I was so happy that six months after the double transplant, I was in Vegas. You know, and it felt so good, Steve. It, you know, of course, I didn't know if I was ever going to be able to do that again. What's it like being on that stage again? Ju ju I am so fortunate. I am so lucky. I mean, I, you know, the way it happened, the way this whole thing happened with me, with the transplant, and everything is in the book, uh, was like a miracle. I, I, you know, I'm O positive. My donor was 21 years old, hit by a car in Reading. She was O positive. That's how things worked out. When I got the liver, I talked to the doctor who, uh, who put in my, my kidney, Dr. Romero's, and Dr. Cataldo Doria put in my liver. I said, I didn't know that I, I wasn't the primary mm. recipient. He looked at me, he said, Bobby, he said, you aren't even the secondary. I said, what do you mean? He said, there were 14 people in front of you waiting for a new liver. Oh 14 people, Steve, turned down a partial liver. I split, I split my liver with a little four-year-old girl. Her name is Saya from Philadelphia. She got 25% of Julia's liver. I got 75% of Julia's liver. I mean... You believe in God? Absolutely. Thought so? Absolutely. I was an altar boy for five years. Join the club. That's when they did it in Latin. Yeah, join the club. <laughs> um, Bobby Rydell, otherwise known as Robert. Robert Roberto Luigi Riderelli. <laughs> Teen Idol on the Rocks, a tale of second chances. We are honored um, that we are joined by um, this extraordinary entertainer and American icon all the way from South Philly. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bobby. My pleasure, Steve. Right Thank there. you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you very much. Thank you.
And every now and again, a new talent comes along. Watch this man. He's on the off of day. This is Bobby Rydell. <laughs> One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -One with Steve Adubato has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, MagnaCare, New Jersey City University, Investors Bank, NJM, NJ Best, and by ShopRite Supermarkets. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.